Paul Nolte is back with us, a senior VP and portfolio manager at Kingsview. Paul, uh, liked your interview with Ben this morning on the Future Show. Want to follow up because the intraday action in commodities got pretty interesting. Uh, crude oil, you know, as we've talked about, has been so resilient. It's, you know, finally a little bit of red. We probably shouldn't freak out about it. But are you interpreting today's action in any, uh, you know, profound way? Not really, really more of a correction, you know, similar to what we're seeing in the equity markets. The equity markets have kind of corrected going sideways. Crude, I think, is corrected here kind of in a dramatic way and it got shoved a little bit during the day with uh, uh, Trump tweeting out, uh, talking about the Iran sanctions. And uh, he had talked to OPEC uh, to convince them to lower energy prices. So mm -hmm. that kind of gave the markets a little bit of a goose on the downside. But it's still well above that 60 uh, break even, if you will, uh, certainly the key support area for, for crude oil. Uh, so we're still seeing it in a bullish pattern. Uh, we'd like to see it below 60, uh, but I think right now you're going to see it trading around sideways here for at least a little bit. Yeah. Um, the uh, and At 1 o'clock uh, you know, Eastern time here at noon in Chicago, we got the Baker Hughes, and uh, the rig count continued to drop. Chevron's numbers were a little bit um, kind of iffy uh, this morning, and they continue to really push for the Anadarko deal to try and scale up. It seems like there is um, something going on maybe that's not getting enough credit, I think, for some of this move up, which has been kind of the stalling of production in the Permian somewhat and here in the U.S. Um, how important is it going to be to watch that and, and see what other companies tell us, Paul? You know, it's interesting. Uh, there's a huge difference between ExxonMobil and Chevron. Both of them suffered from uh, downstream as well as some of their uh, chemical business. Exxon did not do a very good job of controlling their expenses. Chevron did a great job. Uh, and that's mm. why you see the divergence in the performance here today. Yeah. Uh, and certainly Chevron is pushing to, for the Anadarko deal. Um, you're starting to hear from the Anadarko shareholders, at least a few are like, hey, we've got this oxy deal on the table. It's better than Chevron. Let's see if Chevron can, can bump up their price a little bit. So I think there's some activity going on here with energy prices, at least in the first quarter, fairly low. And that's what a lot of them are attributing the poor numbers to with lower energy prices. Uh, that should change going forward. Uh, so we should see the stocks pick up here a little bit. Energy being one of the worst performing uh, parts of the market over the last 12 months or so. We're just now starting to catch a little bit of fire where the stocks are finally catching up to the underlying crude prices. Yeah. Paul, uh, as we head into uh, you know the, the weekend, we've had stocks. Looks like they're going to have a nice positive close. But to, as you mentioned, since we set that you know technical closing record, it's been kind of sideways. Lots of push and pull between companies. Uh, crude oil and what's happening for the global picture. Uh, do you think that it was surprising at all not to see the GDP you know put any kind of lift into the you know crude demand story at all? I didn't hear any you know, kind of discussion of that. It seems like it's very focused on OPEC, very focused on geopolitics. No, they are. And, and really, I think you can dismiss uh, the GDP number as a lot of one-offs uh, from trade to uh, some additional spending by the government uh, and inventory builds in general. So I think the markets and certainly investors are looking at the GDP number as maybe a little bit inflated. It may get revised lower. But uh, I think politics certainly behind energy uh, for the last two months or so from what's going on in Venezuela to the Middle East uh, to our production as well. Uh, you're right, the recount's down a little bit, uh, but on a uh, maybe a six-month basis or so, it's kind of been trending sideways. We're not seeing big moves in either direction. Um, so again, the productivity that we're getting out of the oil wells, very good. Uh, so we may not need as much rig count as we do historically to get out as many barrels of oil as we have historically. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I think, something to keep an eye on here. Yeah. All right. Uh, good stuff. Uh, an important uh, analysis here as we try and look to uh, figure out what it means a red day in crude. It's not used to what we're seeing. Paul, it feels wrong, okay? I thought crude was only going up right now, but um, we'll see, okay? I don't really know how to confirm what went down on that phone call, uh, but maybe it just shows some sensitivity in this market, uh, to your point about a corrective nature. Paul Nolte, always a pleasure. We will see you next week. I know, the Kingsview Asset Management, Senior VP and PM joining us.